For a while now, this site has been sitting on my list of must-do breakdowns as it's packed with some incredible animations. Among everything it showcases, what really stood out to me was this sleek content slider. As you scroll, the images shift with a striking lens distortion effect while the content glides out and the next one flows in, super smooth and visually captivating. What made this especially challenging was this distortion animation. I had never built anything quite like it. A few years back, I was actively avoiding shaders, but the curiosity about how these warped effects work never really left me. Lately though, we have started exploring that space more here on the channel, so I figured this was the perfect time to finally try building it myself. So I gave it a shot, and after hours of tinkering, I managed to put together a basic version of the slider. It triggers on click and carries a similar distortion transition. Not exactly the same, but pretty close. It's not as polished as the original, but considering it only took about 8 hours to rebuild, I figured it was worth sharing the full breakdown. So in today's video, we'll walk through how to build this kind of animated content slider using 3JS, custom shaders, and GSAP. If you enjoy seeing award-winning animations broken down and rebuilt from scratch, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to access the source code for this project, plus hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new full website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's get into it. Let's start by setting up the HTML structure. We'll keep it minimal, just a full screen slider wrapper that holds a canvas for the distortion transition and a content container layered on top of it. So I'll create a slider div first. This will be our main wrapper. Inside that, we'll add a canvas tag. We'll use this later for the WebGL shader animation. Then right after that, I'll drop in a slider content div. This is where we'll display the text content for each slide, like the title and description. Inside the content, we'll have a slide title with an H1 and a slide description that includes a paragraph and some meta info, type, fill and date. That's all we need here, just a clean base structure. Everything else will be driven through JavaScript and shaders. Let's move on to the styling. First, I've imported the inter font from Google Fonts. Then, we'll start by resetting the basic styles, removing default margin and padding, and setting box sizing to border box for consistency. For the body, I'll apply the inter font. Now, for the headings, we'll style the H1 to be all uppercase, give it a bold weight, and scale it up with a fluid font size that adapts to the viewport. We'll also tighten the line height for a sharper look. Paragraphs get a slightly smaller size to keep them clean and readable. Next, I'll style the slider container. It's going to be full viewport width and height, positioned relative with overflow hidden and white text by default. Inside that, the canvas will be full width and height and set to block, so it fills the space without any scroll bars. Now, the content that sits on top of the canvas will target the slider content and absolutely position it to cover the full area. We'll also prevent user selection and bump its C index up so it stays above the canvas. The slide title will be centered both vertically and horizontally using a transform translate and will align the text in the center. Then for the description block, I'll move it slightly below the title. Offset it a bit to one side and give it a fixed width. I'll use flex direction column and space out the children using a nice gap. For the extra meta info, I'll transform the text to uppercase to match the editorial vibe. Now comes the important part for animations. Since we'll be using GSAP's split text plugin to break down the title into characters and the paragraph into lines, I'll add some utility styles for that. So for the title, I'll make sure each word is displayed as a flex row and each character block is set to block display. Then, for both characters and lines, I'll hide overflow so we can animate them cleanly in and out. And finally, the spans inside those characters and lines will set them to inline block, enable will change on transform for performance, and make sure they are positioned relative so we can animate them smoothly. Lastly, I'll throw in a quick media query to adjust the layout on smaller screens, we'll tweak the title and description positions, and widen the content for better legibility on mobile. And that's it for the styling. Now, I've created a separate file called slides.js just to keep things clean. In here, I've set up an array of objects, each one represents a slide. It includes a title, a description, type, field, date, and an image path. Keeping the content separate like this makes it super easy to manage later 
especially if you want to pull in data dynamically or hook it up with the CMS down the line. Now let's talk about the shaders. There is another file called shaders.js which holds both vertex and fragment shaders. These are just exported strings that will inject into 3.js when setting up our shader material. The vertex shader is super simple. It just passes the UV coordinates through so we can use them in the fragment shader. Nothing fancy here. But the fragment shader, that's where all the magic happens. And I mentioned this many times before, I don't have any background in writing shaders. So for this part, I got some help from Claude. I basically explained the visual effect I wanted, something like a circular lens distortion that grows during the transition, and Claude helped me write a GLSL shader based on that. The shader takes two textures, our current slide image and the next one. Then it uses a circular mask to animate the transition. While the circle grows, it applies this soft lens distortion on the incoming image to give that liquid warped feel. There is also a function in there that helps us scale and crop the images properly so they always cover the viewport without getting stretched. That's handled with a custom cover UV function. And finally, I have exposed a progress uniform that will animate with GSAP to control the whole effect frame by frame. We'll pass all these uniforms through 3JS and update them on every transition. Alright. Now that we have got content and shaders out of the way, let's wire things up in the main script file. First, I'll import the data and shaders. So we'll bring in the slides array from the slides.js file and then we'll import both the vertex shader and fragment shader from our shaders file. After that, we we'll bring in 3.js which we'll use to handle all the WebGL rendering and apply our custom shaders. Then we import GSAP and also its split text plugin. We'll be using this plugin to break down the title into individual characters and the paragraph into separate lines so we can animate them one by one. Now right after the imports, I'll register the split text plugin and turn off null target warnings. That's just to clean up the console a bit since GSAP might occasionally target things that don't exist yet, especially during transitions. Then I'll set up a few global variables to manage state. We have got current slide index which keeps track of which slide is currently active. As transitioning is a flag we'll use to avoid triggering new transitions while an animation is already playing. We'll also store all the loaded textures in slide textures and declare shader material and renderer so we can initialize them later and still access them throughout the script. Alright, now let's handle the text splitting. We'll start with a utility function called create character elements. This takes a DOM element like our title and manually wraps each character in span tags. We are doing this because we want the full control over every single letter's animation. So inside this function, we first check if the element already has character elements. If it does, we return early so we don't double wrap anything. Then we split the text into words and for each word, we create a wrapper div with the class word. Inside that, we loop through every character and wrap it in its own character div. And inside that, a span. That span is what we'll animate later using GSAP. We also had an empty space character between words, so spacing looks natural. Now for line splitting, we have got another function called create line elements. This one uses GSAP's split text plugin directly to break a paragraph into lines and then wraps each line in a span. Again, this lets us animate full lines in and out with clean vertical motion. And finally, we wrap those two into an helper function called process text elements. This looks for the h1 title and runs it through the character splitter, then finds all the paragraph tags in the description and runs those through the line splitter. This way, whenever we load a new slide, we can just call this one function to prepare all the text for animation. Alright, now that we have got text splitting utilities out of the way, let's move on and handle how the actual slide content gets created and animated. We'll start with a function called create slide element. This takes in the slide data like title, description and so on and returns a fully structured DOM element. So first, I'm creating a new div and giving it the class slider content. I am setting its opacity to 0 for now, we'll fade it in later as part of the animation. Then inside this element, I am injecting the full HTML layout for the slide that includes the title inside an h1, the main description inside a paragraph tag and then extra details, type, field and date inside their own container. This structure is the same as what we had in our HTML file earlier, it just gets dynamically created now every time we switch slides. Once that's returned, we can append it to the DOM whenever we need a new slide. 
Now let's look at how we handle the actual animation between slides. So here is our animate slide transition function. It takes in the index of the next slide we want to show. First, I grab the current content element and also the main slider wrapper. Then I create a GSAP timeline. We'll use this to sequence everything in order. The first step is to animate out the current content. So we target all the character spans from the title and slide them upward by animating the Y value. We give them a slight stagger so the letters flow out one after another. Right after that, we do the same thing for the paragraph lines, again sliding them up with a bit of delay and a smooth easing. Now once those are out of the way, we run a call function inside the timeline. This lets us inject custom logic into the animation sequence. Inside that block, we create the next content element using the create slide element function we wrote earlier. Then we kill the old timeline to stop any leftover animations, remove the old slide from the DOM and append the new one in its place. Next, we prepare the new content for animation. We set all the spans inside it to be pushed down so they are hidden initially. We give it a short delay just to ensure everything is in place. And then run process text elements function to break the new title and description into animatable chunks just like before. Then we grab all the new character and line spans and animate them into view, sliding everything up from below. Once the animation is done, we reset the is transitioning flag and update the current slide index so we know which slide is currently active. So that's the full transition from fading out the old content, loading the new one, breaking it into pieces and sliding everything back in. Next, we'll look at how to set up the initial slide and wire up the renderer. We'll start with the setup initial slide function. This one just runs when the page loads and it animates the very first slide into view. So first, I grab the slider content element from the DOM Then we call our process text elements helper to split the title into characters and the description into lines just like we have been doing during transitions. Next, we grab all the individual spans for characters and lines and then we animate them in using GSAP. The characters comes up from below with a bit of stagger for that fluid motion and the lines follow shortly after with a small delay. This gives the first slide that smooth, staggered entrance as soon as the page loads. Now let's look at the main renderer setup. We are creating a function called initialize renderer. This is where all the 3JS and shader logic kicks in. First, we create a new 3JS scene and a basic orthographic camera. We don't need perspective here since we are just doing flat full screen rendering. Then we initialize the renderer targeting the canvas element we placed in our HTML earlier. I am enabling anti-aliasing to smooth out the edges a bit. We also set the render size to match the current window size. Now here comes the important part, setting up the shader material. We are creating a new shader material and passing in all the uniforms we need for our distortion effect. So we have got uniform texture 1 and uniform texture 2 for the current and next images, uniform progress to animate the distortion, uniform resolution to keep track of the viewport size and the size of both textures so we can scale them properly inside the shader. Then we add a full screen plane mesh to the scene using the shader material. This will render our distortion effect directly to the canvas. Now let's load the textures. I am using texture loader to load all the slide images from our array. For each one, I am storing it in an array and also saving the original image dimensions so we can pass them to the shader later. Once all the textures are loaded, we assign the first two, slide 1 and slide 2 as the default images for uniform texture 1 and uniform texture 2. This sets up the initial state of the canvas. Finally, we start the render loop. I'll define a render function that just calls itself with request animation frame and renders the scene with the camera on each frame. And that's it. Our WebGL canvas is ready, the distortion shader is running and we are good to trigger transitions. Next, we'll wire up the click event and the transition trigger. We'll start with the handle slide change function. This gets triggered every time we click on the page. The first thing we do is check if a transition is already in progress. If it is, we return early and ignore the click just to avoid overlapping animations. Then we set its transitioning flag to true so nothing else can interrupt while the transition is running. Next, we calculate the next slide index. So we simply increment the current slide index and wrap around using modulo. This gives us an endless loop of slides. 
Now we update the shader uniforms. We assign the current and next image textures to texture 1 and texture 2. And we also update the size values for both textures so the shader can scale them correctly. Once that's done, we call the animate slide transition function we wrote earlier. This will handle animating the text content between slides. And while that's happening, we also animate the shader itself. We use GSAP to animate the progress uniform from 0 to 1 over a couple seconds with a nice easing. This drives the distortion effect inside the fragment shader. So while the content is sliding out and the new one is coming in, the image beneath also gets distorted and transitions to the next one. Once the shader animation completes, we reset progress uniform back to zero and update texture one to hold the new current image so we are ready for the next transition. Now we'll add a resize handler just to make the canvas responsive. In handle resize function, we update the renderer size and also refresh the resolution uniform so the shader knows the new viewport dimensions. Finally, we hook everything up. On window load, we call setup initial slide to animate the first text in and then initialize renderer to boot up the canvas and load the textures. We also add a click listener to trigger the slide change and a resize listener to keep things fluid. And that's it. The whole setup is done. We have got a full screen content slider animated with GSAP and powered by custom shaders in 3.js. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.